Hello again. This is going to be another video explaining a little bit more about your vision. I'm Dr. Joel Hunter and I'm an ophthalmologist and I only say that so that you'll know why when I say what's 2020 and why it's 2020, it'll make more sense. So let's get to it. I'm also the world's fastest eraser of print. So 2020, everybody's heard it at some point, And if you write it out in a medical chart, it looks like this. But what does that mean? Why are those numbers significant? Uh, at its core, 2020 is basically just that you can see at 20 feet what you should be able to see at 20 feet. But as you can figure, you know, if you think through that, well, should be able to see, that seems like it just leaves so much up in the air. And that's the core problem of understanding 2020. It feels arbitrary. And you'd have reason for thinking that, because why would you care what 20 feet is to an average eye versus an eye that's better than average versus an eye that's not very good at all? Because they're all going to have different vision at 20 feet. What sets the standard for that? And the truth is, for a long time, we didn't have a standard. And technically that was before we had 2020, so we have to go back a little bit. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's go back to a little bit of history. For a long time, for a long, long time, like if you go back all the way 500 years, you know, that's what as people, they had houses and stuff then. I mean, I guess they did before that, but they were just kind of mud huts and stuff. No, that, no, yeah, you're leaving the Romans out there. So we had good houses, but we did not know a lot about medicine. That didn't really evolve. If you go back to 500 years ago uh, and, and any time before that, uh, it was pretty much just that if you were a, whether you were a doctor or not, uh, the human body was just kind of a mystery. It was a bit of a question mark. Nobody really understood it. So you can imagine something complicated like vision, which we can hardly even understand today with all of our modern science, it was a mystery, like people really didn't get it at all. Um, so they would just say, you know, do you have good vision or not? Uh, and they'd be like, I guess I see that deer over there. But they didn't really have a standardized testing form, uh, which makes sense because they're still trying to figure out if the four humors are out of alignment, and putting leeches on people's feet. It's really, I mean, it's very fortunate that we live in a time where doctors don't just go around guessing, being like, you've got ghosts in your blood. But now we actually have medicine. Back then they didn't, but they made an attempt a while back, this would be a couple hundred years ago, of deciding what exactly is uh, good vision. They said, you know, we need some standardization around here, around these parts. They said this somewhere in Europe probably. Uh, and so what they looked at was like, well, what could always be the same size? What's always gonna be the same? And you know what they looked at? They looked up to the stars and they pointed to this pattern that may be kind of familiar to you if you're a junior astronomer. And that looked like this. If you've ever seen this before, that right there, that's the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper, one of the things that people don't really know about this, uh, or at least I did until I had to learn all this stuff just for eyeball stuff. It's amazing how much little random factoids you have to learn. These, this one guy right here in the handle, that's actually two stars. They're very close to each other. This one is called Mizar. And this one is called Alcor, which I feel like are very good star names. They feel starish. If you could tell that there was two stars there, if you could see the difference between them, you were deemed, you know, a uh, ye old man with good vision. And, uh, and that was uh, the only really standardization we had. The problem with this is good vision, if we go back and we look at like, what do you actually need to distinguish those two? That was only 2060 level vision. And so we didn't have a way to go much you know, on either side of that. Like, are you 2060 or better? Uh, we didn't know. Interestingly enough, driving vision, at least in the state of Florida and for a lot of the other states in the United States, uh, 2070 is driving vision. So you could basically go by, you know, Mizar and Alcor. But we needed more standardization. So that's what we're going to talk about. All right. So we can fast forward from uh, ye olden times and we move ahead all the way up to the 1860s. Now what was significant about the 1860s, 
significant about the 1860s uh, besides the Civil War. There was, a, there was a couple other big deals, but it was also a year that there was a guy by the name of Snellen, specifically Herman Snellen. Uh, it was a good guy named Herman Snellen. And he said, I am going to create a standardized eye chart. Uh, and it will forever be called the Snell and I chart. And you know what? He was right. It's like, what, 150 years later, we still call it the Snell and I chart. Uh, we use it every day in clinic. And the Snell and I chart said, I'm going to put letters that are big and they're going to get smaller and smaller as we go down. Uh, it's famously known for if people say, like, I'm so blind, I can't, I can only see the big E on the chart. Uh, that big E, that's the Snell and I chart. Significantly, this equals 2200 level vision. 2200 is the standard for legal blindness. Uh, that's the big E on the eye chart. So if you can't see the big E without your glasses on, then you're legally blind. Technically though, legal blindness is just if you can't see that with your glasses on, which as you can imagine is significantly more of a problem. But if you go down and you get smaller and smaller letters down, once you've moved down seven whole lines, you get to a line that always says the same thing. D E F P O T E C. And if you read that without a pair of glasses on, then you have 2020 uncorrected visual acuity. If you read it with a pair of glasses on, you have 2020 corrected visual acuity. And so we finally had some standardization for it. Now, it still doesn't explain why does this specific line happen to equal 2020 vision? Why, why is that the standard? Did everybody just agree that it would be the same size? In which case, how do you decide how far away it is and why is it that way? Well, there's actually science behind that. And this is where it really was revolutionary. So what was the science? So the science behind it. I apologize up front here, I am not an excellent artist, but if I was to attempt to draw a human eye looking at it from the side, as you know, it's kind of a globe, and then there's this cornea, that sticks up off the front, that's where I spend a lot of my time, and then if you were to look at your colored part of your eye, the iris from the side, it would look like that, and then you've got this lens that sits inside there. Back here, this whole area right here, that is called the retina. And everything that you see, you see because this apparatus at the front of your eye, this lens here called the cornea, and this lens here, uncreatively called the lens, those two take whatever image that you're looking at and they make it smaller into a very, very, very tiny focused version of whatever you're looking at on your retina. If you look at a tree, it's taking that big tree and turning it into a tiny tree, just a couple millimeters tall on your retina. If you look at a forest, taking that whole forest, making it just a couple millimeters tall on your retina. And so if you can get perfectly focused light on your retina, you can see. Now, why does this matter? Well, your retina is actually made up of, and don't worry, I won't take the time to drop, but a little more than, actually a lot more than 100 million photoreceptors. Now the ones that really matter, there's 4 million or so in the middle called the cones, and those are the ones that you do for all your fine detail vision. There's this spot right here. It's called the fovea. It's in the middle of a bigger spot called the macula, but it's where all of your good vision is. And so there are photoreceptors in those, in those spots, and those photoreceptors have to be able to register differences in light. You can imagine if it was just turned on or off, that alone isn't enough. You don't get any information from an all black screen or an all white screen. You only get information of the contrast when you can see the difference between the light and the dark with my head hovering behind it. So, you can imagine there's a size limit to how small can you get something and, and still see it. And that size limit has to do with how many, you'd think it might be millimeters, but no, this is, a, this is a globe here. This is a round surface. And so when we use round surfaces, we use degrees. Uh, you know, if you look at the globe, like the Earth, there's degrees of latitude and longitude. Um, now, we're dealing with stuff so small here that a degree, which is this, it's, it's too big, it's too big to use. And so what we use are minutes of arc. And so there are 60 minutes of arc in every degree arc. Um, and so that's what we use on the retina. Now if you go and you look at like how many, how many degrees, how many minutes of arc, it turns out there's a size limit for what you can do. And that's what we're gonna talk about.
So in our last one, we had that cross-sectional picture. You remember, it was a bad drawing last time. It'll be even worse this time. It was a cross-sectional picture of an eye. It had the lens, and we were talking about this retina. But if we were to look at that from the front, like this, and we were to look and see, and we drew all those little photoreceptors out, you would look like you have this little field of these little photoreceptors, just bajillions of them. And they're all like that. And so when we're looking at something like, uh, say, the letter E coming into your eye. So the letter E, you're looking at that on the eye chart. Now, there's actually a lot of light rays coming off of that. And the job of this cornea and lens is to focus those all into the same spot right here on your macula. So if we were to look at these and say we just picked one little thin strip of them, you would have a picture something like this. There's these photoreceptors like that. Well, every one of those photoreceptors can cover roughly, we do this little, do a little bracket here, can cover roughly one minute of arc. Now, what's the significance of that? If it's only covering one minute of arc, it can only tell that it is because there's a difference with the ones around it. If you're looking at a black spot, then you can see it there because the other ones around it aren't looking at that black spot. And so what if we were to try to activate and see if we could put some sort of letter to see how small we could go and still see? Well, what we'd do is we'd wanna, you know, activate this one here, leave that one untouched. Activate this one here, leave this next one untouched. Activate this one here. And if you try to think about what letter would it be able to meet that criteria, you could just draw a letter E right here. And that letter E, uh, would be activating you know, all six of those, but the only way you can tell it's an E is if you can see the spacing between those. And so if you look, there's this, oh, did I say six? There's only five, uh, I can count. Uh, there's, there's five of these. And so that letter E, the, the number five matters instead of six because that letter E can be five minutes uh, of arc. And that five minutes of arc happens to be what we say a normal human eye can see. Now there are eyes that can see a little better than 2020, 2015, there's even some 2010 people out there. But the normal limit is about five minutes of arc. And so this five minutes of arc uh, as a letter E is, is what we see when we see our, our best. And so if you were to you know, kind of look at like, well, what size should that be? How far away? It gives you a standardization. Whatever's gonna create a letter E that only covers five minutes of arc on the retina, that's a 2020 letter E. So when we look at that 2020 line, it actually turns out that if you do the math, a letter E is about 0 0.35 inches at 20 feet. And that lets you see 2020. Anything smaller than that, and you get into super normal vision. So there actually really is a reason that people can say they're 2020 and have it matter and be standardized. I hope that was helpful. If you've ever wondered why does 2020 exist, like I often used to stay up nights as a lad, now, now you know. Thank you. Do you think I should do, so I should do like a, a thing like last time, um, like an outro thing? The gag reel? The deleted? I, I like the idea. Undelete, okay. Um, oh, you know what? This is going to bother me if I don't do this. I just want, I want you to know that 5 plus 1 at equals 6. They're very different numbers. And so if you clicked on this just wondering about 2020, and you have anyone nearby who's very young, Maybe they can learn that from it because I want you to know I learned the difference. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.